Hey, this is Dave from MetalEpidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. Duncan, Kyle from Metal Epidemic, back with another album review. Now, for this review, Duncan, Kyle, and I have been checking out the new album from Ethereal Rock Group, SOM. The band's new album, The Shape of Everything, will be released on January 21st on Pelagic Records. So, um, this is album number two from SOM, which follows their 2018 release, The Fall, and also their 2021 EP, Awake. Uh, the band is comprised of current and former members of Constance, Junius and Grammy nominees Caspian. They had planned to enter the studio in 2020 to record uh, this follow-up album. However, pandemic-induced lockdown forced them to improvise and record entirely remotely, producing 2021's Awake EP. This new workflow redefined SOM's process, which carried into the completion of their forthcoming LP. Uh, this album was recorded, mixed and mastered by vocalist, guitarist Will Benoit uh, at his own Radar Studio in Connecticut, New England's first solar-powered recording facility. Nice! Yeah. So, um, I I had just heard um, one of the tracks from this album um, at the start of December, I think it was. Um, it was their second single from the album. It's got a track called Moment, which is the, the album opener. Um, and I was kind of instantly sold on it, to be honest. Like when I heard that that song, I was like, "This is fucking really good." I, I, I didn't like need time for it to grow on me at all. Um, just one of those songs that has something kind of instantly captivating about it. Um, the press release I read about the single uh, mentioned the words "doom pop." <laughs> <laughs> oh, doom pop, you say? That's it's not a bad attempt, at, you know, summing up their their overall sound, but. Um, this, you know, as an album, um, it does have other styles kind of like blended into this. Um, you do have a little bit of kind of like post rock, a little bit of post metal, um, and there's also a little bit of a, a kind of alternative metal kind of type vibe mm -hmm. kind of in this as well. Um, the that the, the sound on that kind of opening track uh, is very ethereal. It, it's loaded with like atmosphere and has a has a bit of a kind of like post metal kind of type sway to it. Um, but it's also got a kind of kind of modern kind of metal streak to it as well, almost almost in a kind of Deftones esque type way. Um, the riffs have this kind of, as I said, a kind of alternative metal type bite to them. It's very kind of chunky, kind of metallic sounding. Um, there's also there's a wee there was a wee, wee touch of Devin Townsend in there as well, just a wee smidge. Um, but it's very it's very well balanced uh, musically and at the chorus from that track is it's one of those tracks that just kind of grabs you and gets into your head um, and it, when I heard it it, it kind of reminded me of of Junius it's not a, a kind of million miles away from that sound um, Will Benoit he was also in that band um, they they have that same kind of kind of crossover type sound you know taking that kind of alternative metal and, and coating it in something you know like with a lot of atmosphere and a very um, post type way um, the the uh, the second track, Animals, um, some of the, the kind of chord choices and the way they emphasise kind of each note of the chord, um, it, f it did feel reminiscent of um, Constance, which is obviously another band that's linked to this one, um, but it's, it's mixed with a more kind of riff heavy sound. Um, almost, I mean, it, there was a little bit of kind of mountaineer as well going on in that second track, just, you know, and a lot of the kind of, the, the kind of picking of the, the guitar, of the, the notes and the chords and stuff. Um, so you do get, a, there's a little bit of a kind of sludgy kind of post-metal tone on that track. Um, I think what I kind of enjoyed about this most was just the kind of huge sound um, and the amount of like different textures and um, on offer on this one. It's very much an album that I felt like kind of immersed in because of its size. Um, but once you're in it, it's, it's quite a kind of cathartic release. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like lying in a, lying in a warm bath. Um, you know, it's quite a, it's quite um, restorative. Is the word I would use. Mm. Um, you know, even though like it has its like heavy moments, it's still quite a relaxing kind of album. Um, 
And I think that's due to the, a lot of the kind of slower tempos and there's a lot of nice kind of uplifting chord progressions. Also the production as well, um, which has uh, it's been kind of carefully crafted to like accentuate you know that big kind of atmospheric side of the band. Um, and I think they absolutely nailed that. Um, even on the, the bigger, more kind of rough heavy tracks like Clocks, um, it still sounds huge. Um, same with uh, Heart Attack, which is track seven. Um, it had like a almost like kind of evoked that like kind of diamond eyes or gore kind of era. Uh, death tones type sound and some of the kind of thicker riffs. Um, vocally though, I think it's a, a very well executed release. Um, it does kind of stick within a sim similar kind of style for the majority of the album, but that kind of melodic, very kind of shoegazy kind of style vocal kind of suits the music. Um, he, it, it reminds me at times I was listening, I think it sounds a little bit like um, like Dominic uh, Palermo from Nothing, mm -hmm. and at times uh, Ryan Osterman from Holy Fawn as well, kind of similar, but um, and they're both great vocalists uh, within the genre, so that it wasn't a bad thing at all. Um, there's also, there was like an odd moment where I heard a bit of, uh, what's his name, Sanchez, Claudio Sanchez from Coheed and Cambria as well. There was like, mm -hmm. what kind of hints in his just certain words um, or like phrases and stuff. I was like, oh, that's a wee bit like. Um, but I think he's he's got a kind of, like a kind of fragility to his, his vocal tone that kind of draws you in. You know, it's very believable. Um, especially like tracks like Wrong, which was a, a kind of particular highlight for me. I think he nails that kind of emotional side uh, perfectly. Um, I think like this is a, a step forward for this band. Um, after listening to their previous release, I think there's more personality on this album compared to uh, The Fall from 2018. Um, the Deftones influences on that first album were far more apparent on, uh, on that album than this one. Um, here it's still there you can still hear it but it doesn't feel quite as like prominent or on the nose you can hear they've tried to pull the tracks more towards the kind of shoegazy side of things uh, or kind of post-rock side of things without removing that part of themselves from the that they had in the earlier releases and um, i think the production feels better in some ways as well um feels bigger for sure i um, especially noticed that in the drums they feel punchier um although some of the, some of the drum sounds were a little bit kind of I don't know, a little bit kind of one-dimensional, I felt. Um, the snare in particular, I don't know, there was something about it just didn't have much kind of depth or, you know, a lot of kind of dynamics to it. Um, I think when I was listening, I was thinking a, a more kind of like natural or more kind of resonant sound and snare might have opened that drum sound up a bit more. Um, but, you know, that's just personal preference. Um, I thought the, the kind of level of like kind of vocal ambience, I thought that was spot on. I really liked the way the vocals were mixed. Um, almost like at times I was listening, it sounded almost like two like vocal takes, mm -hmm. like one panned slightly left, one panned slightly right. You know what I mean? And it made it feel more like kind of spacious, if that makes sense. Um, the bass is also really well placed in the mix as well. We've got a lot of nice bottom end, but it, it doesn't disappear into the background or feel like overpowered. Um, yeah, this was a, a very enjoyable release. Um, I liked it from the, the kind of first single that I heard. Um, so I was like very interested going in. Um, I think if I had any like kind of small criticisms towards it, um, the, the, the kind of tempo of the album can be quite repetitive. Um, it doesn't really kind of move out, you know, out with a kind of certain gear. Um, and rhythm, rhythmically, it is you know pretty similar throughout. Um, but you know that's fine. Um, it's probably more to do with the kind of the genre than anything else. Um, but I think maybe because of that, it's it stopped a couple of the tracks from being more distinctive on the album. Um, they, there was a couple kind of blended into one another um, occasionally. Um, I think they do kind of change the level of heaviness, which works on some tracks. Um, but on others, it, it did get a little bit familiar, but it wasn't a huge issue, to be honest. Um, still a very enjoyable listen. Um, and I think the, the, mel the melodic kind of vocal hooks are good enough to keep you coming back to check this one out again, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed this. Um, I just think like January is, is shaping up to be pretty fucking awesome for new albums actually um, I'm quite impressed so far um, how did you guys go on with this um, Duncan what did you think um, this is an interesting one isn't it hmm. tell me like more just a bit I mean on paper mm -hmm. looking at this listening to the sounds the influences and all the rest I should have taken to this a lot more than I did oh, right. um, and I'm still trying to work out exactly the point that it doesn't all fully come together for me mm -hmm. Um you've already done a really good job of mentioning like key influences on there um i got when you were mentioning devin townsend i got more of uh he did that produced that four stroke barn album 
Mm, yeah. And uh, it shares a lot, specifically with the guitar, the heaviness of the guitars against the rest of their sound. Yeah. She has a lot in common with that. Mm -hmm. But the kind of four-stroke barn is the more ostentatious, eccentric version yeah. of what these guys are doing here. Um, I think vocally, once again, you're, you're kind of you're stealing a lot of my thunder here. <laughs> Interestingly enough, and I'll hand in my kill cool card right now, uh, Kevin Palmer from Trust Company. Um, oh, that's yeah. Very, very. He's, he's got a breathy. The, the, the way he sings is a very breathy tone. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that, that made me tolerate that very average new metal band longer than I should have. <laughs> as the vocals were not like super aggressive and whatnot. He had this very kind of soft, breathy tone yeah. that could have could have easily been plucked from there and been put in like an alt metal band. And it would have worked just as fine. Um like. Okay, he is jumping away, and he's back. He's I, I, I'm never sure whether or not he's doing a gimmick joke, or if he actually just pulled his headphones out. My uh, my laptop just said it was going to shut down. I forgot to switch it on at the wall. Nice. Apologies. There we go. I thought I thought you were doing the dramatic. I've had enough of this. I'm sorry. Trust company. <laughs> Fuck this guy. I'm out of here. But yeah, like, it reminded me of that. I think um, it's interesting to mention Doom, um, because Doom yeah. Yeah, I, I get the I I get it to an extent. I don't fully get it. That might explain the the lack of um, dexterity in the pacing of the album mm. for sure. That would link much more in line with Doom. And there is a kind of more melancholic sort of vibe to the album, but it doesn't necessarily. It's not slow enough to be Doom and it's not poppy enough to be pop, so maybe that is the compromise between the two. Mm. Um, the production on it is fucking lush. I love it. Like, like, there's a whole swath of bands now coming out where there's really, really, really spacious, really, really, really nice tone that just kind of works through everything. And I like, I, I could, I could listen to albums that sounded like this for weeks and not get tired of it I, I, I find there's a I find bands that can utilise and utilise it well are, are really clever <laughs> and th this is a great example of that there are times where there's actually not a lot going on but the sound is full mm. um, at all times there's no point here where it feels like it's kind of kind of a little bit weaker not hitting you with it and then the guitars which can sometimes be playing something very mid-rangey and then hit that low tone that has there, which is just really very Deftones-esque, actually. When it hit, they hit some of those heavier tones, is really disgusting to, to listen to. Mm. And it juxtaposes really nice against the, the, the nicer stuff that's going on. Vocally, it's really interesting. There's lots of layering going on with the vocals, which I really like. I'm not sure whether or not um, there's a backing vocalist there, or whether he himself is actually doing a higher tone. Mm. But the vocal melodies are fucking incredible like really 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 good um and they work so well and there's thought in that yeah. because they don't always follow the way you would expect them to which is also a criticism i think at times vocally it sounds discordant to what is being played almost out of key mm. and it's not it's not out of key it's there for a specific reason to make it sound jarring but because the rest of the album sounds so pretty and the guitars are usually the instrument you would use to do that because they do it vocally, it, it, as a vocalist myself, it's very, very difficult for me not to go uh, like, mm -hmm. like straight away, uh, he's, out, he's out a little bit there. But I don't think he actually is. I think it's specifically that's the, that's the impact they're going for. They're going for a discordant melody against the two, something that, that doesn't sit... And, and the, the kind of cadence that you would expect. And I, I mean, that's fine as well. Just not a technique I particularly like. I find it off-putting. And mm. it's utilised in a few songs, including the aforementioned moment. About the, the middle of the song, there's a, there's a vocal harmony that's is deliberately out of key. And it, I, I just, I, I, it makes me, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. I don't, I don't like that sound. Um, notwithstanding that though, I, I'm going to kind of agree with you. I think the the only issue I have with this release overall is a minor release, uh, minor issue because it's a minor release. It's not a you know like a 40, 50 minute album. This clocks in under thirty five minutes. Is that there isn't always enough to differentiate the next track that's coming in? Hmm. 
And as a result of that, it can feel like you're listening to like a 16 minute song and it's actually three tracks playing back to back. So um, once again, I think live, and we mentioned this when we talked about Maybe She Will last year, I think if there's a visual element and from the artwork of this band, I would be very surprised if there isn't a visual element Mm. um, that kind of accompanies their sound. That changes in a live setting and makes a lot more sense on an album, sometimes just having something, even if it's a like a sample clip or you know, stripping it in instrumentation in favor of one instrument kicking you off can sometimes separate those songs. But I'm 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 kinda nitpicking. I, I'm I'm like deliberately trying to pick out things that I can knock it down from because the core of this band is is great. And we're we're on a we're in a really interesting thing. This is kind of the it's almost the shoegaze effect of bands not sounding like shoegaze, but utilizing all the tools and techniques of shoegaze bands, mm-hmm. um, which I'm really interested to see how that continues on because they're obviously mixing a, a more doomier element with it. We've already heard it mixed with elements of black metal, plenty more genres that we can mix it in with to see mm-hmm. where it goes. But um, yeah, some are on my radar now. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, I'd be low to say I love it, Right. But I think there's a lot on this to love, and I think this is one I will probably come back. It's like an enigma, like a puzzle that I'm going to come back to more throughout the year to see if I can kind of crack what it is specifically about the album that doesn't make it a five for me. Because mm-hmm. um, there is there's something there, and it, it's not just that vocal melody thing, and it's not just the you know the the definition between tracks. There's something else that's holding it back for me, and I'm not quite sure I know what it is yet. Okay. Uh, Kyle? Yeah, I'm on the same sort of page. I mean, production-wise, it sounds amazing. It's really, really nice and pleasant to listen to, even though it's metal and it's got its discordant parts and all this stuff. It's really, really an interesting listen if you dig deep, and like you can hear everything from the bass to all of the ambient stuff on top you know with all the reverbs and the guitars and the vocals and everything but yeah i think rhythmically it it, it could do with a little bit more variation i felt myself listening get about halfway through going it's pretty similar so far i mean it's not to say the songs are bad or badly written or anything it's they're quite good and if you listen to each song on its own you can pick out all the different parts and everything nothing really blends together too much until you listen to song back to back just like it's been mentioned before it's uh mm. Yeah, things get a bit... It's not samey, but it's just a bit... It's so similarly rhythmic. All the tempos are quite similar, if not the same. The, yeah. it just, it's, it's different. difficult to like just tell them apart, especially if you've got it on in the background. If you're not sat there actually paying attention to it, it can be like, oh, okay, three mm-hmm. songs have gone past, I haven't noticed. But I quite enjoyed it for a lot of reasons. Like you said, it's like sitting in a warm bath. It just sort of washes over you, and you can just sort of relax to it and sit down in a dark room with it in your headphones and have a good time with it it's not you know it's not a bad album by any means it didn't the one that grabbed me was a uh, moment definitely moment i mean even that discordant part in the middle i love i love discordant stuff so <laughs> I'm totally opposite to duncan here if i hear hmm. someone singing delivery i'm like yes because one that's really hard to do and two yep. for some reason it just hits me right in the gut with the feeling of oh, fucking but the thing is so, the thing is when yeah. I, like it's so clever how they do it yeah uh, which makes me like frustrated because the bit before is spectacularly counterpointed and then yeah. it's a slight change down that makes it like yeah. unpleasant to listen to and then it corrects itself but not like I've hit the uh, uh yeah. no, that's not I should hit it's like it's you can hear it's very it's very it's smart yeah, it's yeah. just that it's a technique yeah. that it's you like hate, um, yeah. it's like doing um, it's like doing like one of those like sonic boom things in a yeah. song where I know you were like I've done that to death and mm-hmm. I'm like no I want more of that now Kyle yeah. it's that technique the same thing but yeah on a, opposite on a, yeah <laughs> I like that technique a lot I love discordance and dissonance it just makes me feel like I'm in control of something I shouldn't be <laughs> no I had a good time with this one maybe not my favorite thing I've ever listened to in the world ever but it's absolutely very far from my worst like hated thing ever so it's like somewhere in the middle like I would definitely listen to it again and go back to it and see I look forward to what they do next and then yeah, have they done stuff before did you say I I've, yeah an album yeah yeah okay I'm, i'll probably go back and listen to that after this as well because i want to see where they've come from try and like project where they're going to go next i don't know mm. but i mean i literally do... thought you were going to start singing cotton eye joe there and i was like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> trust me if there's anyone in the world going to sing cotton eye joe it's definitely me yeah. <laughs> just not now <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Um, so what we're thinking, ratings-wise, for this new one from Som. Uh, this could be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did enjoy this. Like, I did enjoy this album. Um, and uh, as, I, as, as I said, yeah, there are moments where it feels a little bit kind of repetitive, just, you know, in the, yeah, in the kind of flow and the kind of rhythm of the, of the album. It, it does change in heaviness, though. So there are parts of the album that completely stand out, and there are vocal hooks on certain tracks that that kind of remind me of, you know, oh that's track three or that's track five or whatever. Um, so there are moments like that, but then there are moments where I think like, I'm on a different song or I'm on the same song. <laughs> um, but I think what they're doing is quite different. Um, like there's not a lot of bands sound like this. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's little things that will remind you, but they're not. You know, it's, it's, there's not another band that sounds like Som, if you know what I mean, either. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's a very solid album. I'm going to go four out of five on this one. Uh, Duncan, yeah, I'm going a little bit higher than you. Like mm-hmm. I say, I t- to me this ticks all the boxes, but there's one box which is undecided, and I don't know what that means yet. <laughs> um, this could very well easily go up. For me later on in the year if i just get if i just get it <laughs> uh, but it's a 4.5 for me i think it's oh, nice. i think it's kind of fucking awesome man honestly mm. this is one of these ones that is almost begging me to revisit which mm. um i love albums like that where you can go on a journey throughout the year listening to it and chart the bits where you've listened to it loads because you find like you're like there's a ne- there's something a technique or something you find that you're like i need to listen to this more now with that understanding so there's a very good chance it'll go up but it's a 4.5 for me just mm. now nice okay yeah i'm gonna come in with a four out of five it's really enjoyable to listen to even though it gets a little bit samey here and there i mean not really samey but you know what i mean mm. it's uh no it's really really good to listen to especially like you say on the re-list and it's very rewarding so mm. yep four out of five okay. nice um, so this one drops on January 21st on Pelagic Records. The album is called The Shape of Everything. Um, if you want to check the guys out, I will put links below to their Facebook and to their band camp so you can check out pre-release. Um, let us know what you think once you've heard any of the singles. Um, I'll put a link below to one of their more, most recent singles. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Uh, once the album drops, stick some comments in below. Happy to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. Um, that is the review. Thank you for checking out. Much appreciated. We'll be back with another review very soon, but until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.